So I'm not usually a fan of romance. Sometimes it gets very soppy, sometimes it's very cliche, and can be pretty boring as just a narrative choice. But in this particular anime, I felt that it was done pretty well. Hello everyone, Hobbyist here. We are back at it again with another anime review. And this time I took on an anime type that is very different from what I'm normally used to. If you guys don't know me already, I'm usually a fan of more Senin stuff and more Battle Shonen. That's just kind of been my cup of tea for a while. So when I get constantly recommended from friends and Reddit and all that sort of thing to watch your lie in April, I was a bit skeptical. Primarily because, oh, it's romance, it's cheesy, it's weird, it's cliche, all the things. But when I finally got into this one, I was honestly very surprised. Just because the relationship building that happened inside of this short anime spoke volumes for me. Kosai is a character who has been through a lot. He's a piano prodigy. He's done all of these amazing things inside the world of classical music and his realm. But there's this trauma and this baggage that's behind him to where he struggles to hear music because of the trauma that he's been through with the abuse from his mother and how he associates the piano with her and everything that she's done and the guilt that he has from wishing her dead and when she actually did die not being able to apologize, say sorry or anything like that and get that closure. So... Kosai's story really follows finding Kaori, who is the one who provides this new outlook on music. That music doesn't have to be robotic and to the score one for one. How you can create your variations, you can express yourself in your music, you can find the sound that resonates the most with you, find the technique that makes your style your own. And it's just this beautiful romance between how it changes Kosai as a person. And I think that their story that they have between two musicians slowly falling for each other, not just for the sake of falling for each other, like a lot of other romances that I've seen, but it's deeper in the fact that it changes the way Kosai views music and the way that he plays. And I think that just the musical score inside of this show is absolutely fantastic as well. I think when you get hit with the music and as you feel the music change with Kosai as his arc plays on, you there's just this feeling that you can get that it's really hard to describe. Because me personally, I've always been a believer in the power of music. I believe that music can resonate with you on an emotional scale that no other words can possibly do to you. I think that music is the, one of the best ways of self-expression one of the best therapies that you can possibly have, whether it be you as an artist or just listening to music, kind of just being off in your own headspace. I really resonated with that a lot. And just understanding the feeling that these characters inside of the show get when it comes to music. My biggest problem that I have with the show, however, it's kind of always been the love triangle angle that they went with, with Suwaki being the childhood friend romance angle. Not to say that the childhood friend can't be the it can't be a good romance story, but it's a constantly tried upon trope. And especially when they started going into the love triangle cliche, that's kind of where I wasn't really a big fan of it. Because to be honest, Subaki, when it comes to just the relationship between her and Kosai, was never really expounded upon until you got close to the end of the show. I mean, you got hints that they were childhood friends, but it was nothing romantic or anything like that to where you felt a need to have tension between Kosai as far as who he picks, if he picks Kaori or if he picks Tsubaki. Because Tsubaki has been characterized as that she's this athlete who isn't very smart, she doesn't like music, she thinks music's boring and all that sort of thing, yet she's known Kosai her whole life. But the problem with it is, at least when it comes to me with love triangles, is that there's not very many good love triangles that exist. To me, a good love triangle always has to be where both sides that are wanting that one person 
are pulling at the strings emotionally from two different angles. One of the best examples that I had of this was actually in superhero comics with the X-Men, particularly the love triangle that's infamously known between Cyclops, Jean Grey, and Wolverine. But I think that the narratively, they have a better love triangle than most any other love triangles in romance, period, even though it's mostly revolves around superheroes. And here's why. Taking into account Cyclops and Jean Grey, if you're going for that ship more, then you're more inclined to like them because Cyclops and Jean Grey have been X-Men since day one. If you read back to the 1960s X-Men, Cyclops and Jean are in that first class of X-Men. And just knowing their backstories makes them completely different in why you would gravitate towards the relationship. Cyclops has literally been an X-Men since day one. He was the first student that Xavier took on. He has this backstory with his brother and the trauma and the fact that he can't control his powers. Even all the way to this day, he still can't control his powers. He has to be this tough leader that everyone counts upon. And sometimes it's hard to stay faced with that. Especially since with Cyclops' backstory, it's literally he had to jump, jump out of a plane with his brother. And almost got them killed. There was the whole experimentation and trauma that he got from Mr. Sinister after losing his brother Havoc. And all that sort of thing. So Cyclops has got this baggage to him that he keeps bottled up most of the time. Because he knows that he has to be the strong one when the rest of the X-Men are around. And Jean can kind of see that in Scott. Whereas the other way around with Cyclops for Jean, it's that Jean Grey found out that she was a telepath and that she was a mutant through accidentally teleporting her mind inside of her friend and seeing her get killed in a car accident from her perspective. Seeing the car come at her, hit her, and then die. Where then the telepathic link broke and then all of that memory, all that anguish, all the feelings that she had were from her friend went inside of Jean and kind of called her, made her reclusive. Honestly, it's a very jarring backstory for Jean Grey. But she's also the, one of the most compassionate people inside of the original X-Men lineup. Sure, all the guys are hitting on her and all that sort of thing, but she's very reclusive. She's very scared. She's got all this trauma, and she wants to connect and feel and care. But it's all been bottled away. And then these two characters are trying to work with each other. to Where Cyclops feels that Jean can come out of her shell. That Jean can become as great as she wants to be, and that she doesn't have to hold back, that she can be herself. Whereas with Jean, Jean sees that Cyclops is putting on a front, and that Cyclops wants to be more vulnerable at times, but he can't because he feels that he has an integrity and a responsibility to live up to. And then Wolverine comes into the picture in the giant X-Men. So... As probably most of us know about Wolverine, Wolverine's been around for almost 200 years, like his physical age, because his healing factor has slowed down his body from aging, to where he ages significantly slower than everybody else. So this whole time, he's been with plenty of women over his lifetime. He's met and left people. He's gotten attached and then heartbroken because they would die before him. And that's even excluding the Weapon X stuff that he went through. And being turned into this mindless killing machine with absolutely no sense of control whatsoever over his entire body. So there's that trauma on top of it. So Wolverine sees himself a little bit as a monster, as someone who doesn't deserve love and all that sort of thing. And Jean Grey can see that inside of Wolverine. Aside from the tough and rough exterior that is with this character, and how much of a gruff guy he tries to come off to be. When in all actuality, he's a person who seeks love. He's a person who wants to see, be seen as more than just a weapon of mass destruction. And Jean wants to, because Jean is a compassionate person, she wants to reach out to Wolverine and kind of be that person for him. To be that stable sense of mind. So, it's two very strong relationship dynamics pulling at each other. To where when Cyclops and Wolverine are fighting over Jean, it's a bit more difficult to choose if you want Jean to be with Cyclops because they've been together since day one. 
or if you want Jean to be the one to help heal Wolverine from his trauma, to help him heal from the things that he's done and know that he can be a person. That is an example of a optimal love triangle right there. But with coming back to your lie in April, I feel that it was probably the most one-sided in comparison. Like with Kaori's relationship with Kosai, when you're talking about the music and his character growth, she just kind of yanks that whole triangle and kind of just takes over from there. And it isn't only until she tragically passes away that things sort of shift a little bit. But honestly, that's been my whole peeve when it comes to your lies in April is that love triangles need to be built on both sides and not just with one story focusing over the other in order for the tension and the emotions to be felt from both ends. So honestly, that's my only peeve that I've got against this and what knocked it down a little bit, a little bit for me from being as great as I thought it could be. But let me know down in the comments below. Do you guys agree with my thought process? Do you guys disagree? Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well and to hit that notification bell because I'll keep posting various sorts of anime content. I've got board game content. I've got video game content as well. I'm trying out a whole bunch of different things. But otherwise, I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.